Good morning and welcome to uh, this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, we are a webinar, we are an online show um, held every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, however, if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, so if you um, can't join us on Wednesdays, you can always go back to our website and look through our archives to watch any of our previous shows. Um, both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, please share with your uh, friends, family, neighbors, um, and colleagues who may be interested in any of our topics of our shows. They can come and join us Wednesday mornings, sign up, or just go ahead and watch our recordings. Um, I'll show you at the end of today's show where all those archives are available for you so you can um, take a look at them um, later. Um, we do, um, speaking of the topics, we do a mixture of things here on the show. Um, book reviews, interviews, tr mini training sessions, demos of services and products, uh, resources for librarians and libraries. Basically, the only criteria is that something is library related. Um, something libraries are doing, something that we um, think they could be doing. Um, services and resources since we're here in Nebraska, um, things that we at the Library Commission provide to libraries. So we will um, have some sessions that are very Nebraska-centric when there are services and programs. Um, but um, everything will come out and be about libraries. Um, sometimes you might look at some t uh, titles of some sessions and you know, people get creative with those <laughs> and think, why is that on the show? What does this have to do with libraries? Um, but trust me, everything comes around to libraries in the end. That's my only rule. <laughs> that it is, of course. And all types of libraries. We, um, we here at the Library Commission, we are the state agency for libraries, so our, this is, we are the state library, and we um, serve um, public, academic, school, um, institutional, correctional facilities, museum libraries, anything that's a library, um, there will be topics on the show. Um, we've been doing Encompass Live uh, since January 2009, so there is quite a big archive back there. Um, so there's definitely be something you could find that would be of interest to you. Um, as I said, we do do sessions. We do have sessions that are specifically Nebraska Library Commission related things, and we have commission staff come on. But we also bring in guest speakers. And um, today, I guess you're kind of both. You're <laughs> you're a guest speaker, but you're also part of the Library Commission. Um, today, our topic is weeding. Um, we're going to just go a different route and talk about gardening today. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Um, this is library weeding, uh, um, a topic that is um, near and dear to some people and uh, terrifying to others. <laughs> um, and to talk about this with us today is um, Denise Harders, who is still co-director or until the 15th of October. Okay, co-director of our Central Plains Library System. For those of you not from Nebraska, we have four regional library systems that are, um, I kind of think of them as like outreach from the Library Commission. They're associated with the Library Commission in different regions and there are, are people on the ground um, working with libraries and training and, and um, consulting um, and helping out the libraries in their area. And um, Denise has a session that she's done Quite a few times doing around the state reading, and specifically in their area of the state, they do a special little program too, mm -hmm. pretty much every year. Yep. Um, that she's going to talk about as well. So um, I'll just hand over to you, Denise, to take a and tell us how to do our reading. Well, <laughs> without getting really dirty. Yeah, maybe a little bit dirty. A little bit, <laughs> dirty. depending on how old you're. <laughs> depending on how old your library is, it can be really dirty. <laughs> and the books, yes. We. Uh, I thank you for having me, Krista. It's, this is a topic, as you said, that is makes some people fearful. Um, the biggest fear I ever hear is, what if it's something important? What if it's something we need? Mm -hmm. And we're going to address that as we go along. But truthfully, if you have a library, you must weed. There we go. There we go. Should be good to go down. All right. So let's start with a little bit of a definition. Deselection. It's selection in reverse. Mm -hmm. And it's because you have to look on a regular basis of what's on your shelf, if it's still being used, if it's something useful for your community, or if it needs to go. 
And so that's the weeding part is when it goes. It's essential to do this even though it is difficult because shelves are not unending. Yes. Every yes. library has a finite amount of space and if you don't weed, eventually you're overrun. So there's a couple of reasons right here in the beginning I want to talk about that weeding is helpful. Weeding is helpful to your, to, to your customers, to your patrons, because it allows you to give them an interesting and clean space. They can see the material that's there, and sometimes they find something they're not expecting simply because they're able to browse effectively. Now for the librarian, weeding has many advantages, but one major one is that it helps you find the gaps in your collection. You can make purchases with confidence. If you know, hey, we don't have any current books on how to coach baseball. Come the beginning of summer, you'll want to have a few new things on that topic. So it, you can buy with confidence, and the weeding creates space for the materials that you do buy. Now, most of us were taught by our parents and teachers to treat books with great respect. I remember mm -hmm. taking home the note about wash your hands, don't you have dirty hands when you're looking at the school's library books. And it's important, yes, to have respect for the printed material. The problem is when it's time to weed, we confuse the information contained within the package with the packaging. Mm -hmm. Now there are a lot of great excuses for not weeding. Well, they're not really great, but they're kind of funny sometimes. One that I hear is, I bought this book. The one I really hate to hear is, I bought this book and it's never gone out. Oh. Now, that happens. Yeah. So you have to be aware. So you have like personal vested interest. In that it. you think, hey, I really thought this was an interesting <laughs> book. I knew several people that I thought would check it out. Mm -hmm. And it just never happened. Well, there's a few things you can do to address that. And, and we'll do that as we go along. But you really need to consider and think of your personal responsibility to the collection as a whole. If it's not earning its keep, the book doesn't get to stay. Now the award-winning and classics, we'll look at that as we go <coughs> along too. How about the one, someone might need it. I know that the <laughs> minute I throw it out, the next person in the door is going to ask for that book. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> that probably does happen. I think it's more of an urban legend than truth. <laughs> but if someone needs something that you no longer have, you have two choices. You can buy another copy or you can interlibrary loan it from another larger library, probably that has more space than you do. Mm -hmm. Interlibrary loan is a great resource for libraries. Um, and you don't have to own everything. No, and you can't. You it's can't not possible. Everything. Yeah, it's not physically possible. So you do need to realize that I don't have everything here, but that's okay. I can always get it from someone else. Libraries are Access. all about sharing. Yep, you know, Access other. to it mm -hmm. is all that's important. Now, as you read down through that list, one that, that's not there that you might think of is it's taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? When people see me throwing out books, I'd be, uh, I'm wasting taxpayer money. Well, it's more of a waste of taxpayer dollars to keep outdated or ugly books on the shelf because time is money too. Your patrons come in the door, they have a certain amount of time to spend, some of them, some can lollygag all day, and we all love those. But this you know, they shouldn't have to waste time digging through all these old ugly books to find what they're looking for. Books are valuable. I agree, books are valuable. And, but if the information contained within them is outdated, even dangerously outdated, and I know that sounds a bit dramatic, but you know, I have I have seen 
a book that was recently pulled off someone's shelf that talked about the health benefits of smoking. It was published yeah. in the 40s. It was still on the shelf. That's stunning. <laughs> the yeah. benefits of smoking. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes nothing is better than junk. Mm -hmm. So, remember that phrase in your head. Sometimes nothing is better than junk. Because it gets a little scary sometimes. Mm -hmm. If we're weeding a collection that hasn't been weeded in a long time. Oh, you're going to find those. Those you think yeah. you find those really old ones and you're thinking where is there a new book something from the year 2000 and we're talking 17 years ago That's today's like high school seniors were born in the year 2000 so that's really not a very good guideline anymore Gotta keep moving that end, that old date yeah, that forward. Old, yeah, we need to keep moving that ahead because oh my gosh, two thousand to me sounds oh that's fairly new. It's not. So now we're going to talk real specifically about the benefits of weeding in a library. Now what you need to know is library shelves should never be more than eighty-five percent full. Seventy-five percent is better. That means if you measure your shelf, divide it by four, and that number of inches at the end should be empty. And I can't tell you how many times people look at me and say, what are you talking about? If I have empty space at the end of each and every shelf, my community is going to lynch me. No, it's good to have that space at the end. It allows for face forward display for one thing. Yeah, you can use that empty space to yeah. So it's a really mm -hmm. you can you can put up signage, you can do shelf displays. There's lots of things you can do with that little bit of space. But now shelf space costs money. It's library shelves are valuable real estate. Every book on that shelf needs to earn its keep. It costs money to purchase more shelving, and that's if you even have room for it. Put it, yeah. It, yeah. So that's one thing to consider. Think about who has to do the shifting, and if it's you, you'll know. You know what I'm talking about. How many times do you look at a shelf and say, "Oh, that one's full. I don't have time to shift." Lay it up on top of the shelf, put it on top of the books, right in the area where it's supposed to be. Stand it up on the floor. I've been in a lot of libraries where there are a lot of books because of the lack of time to shift that they're not where they're supposed to be. The books don't end up on the shelf. That mm -hmm. can get patrons really frustrated. Mm -hmm. Now, think about if you got your really tight shelf and your patron sees something they want, they reach in inevitably put their finger on the top of the spine and pull. Mm -hmm. If it's a little bit of an older book, mm -hmm. chances are it's going to tear down. Yeah. So, number one, the books get damaged if there's no room on the shelf. There's no wiggle room to them. If yeah. then, then things get damaged. So, that's a huge benefit of weeding is that space that you're saving. Mm -hmm. Once again, I mentioned time. Your busy patrons don't want to look through old, inaccurate material, looking for the one new book that you talk find on their topic. And believe me, it makes Reader's Advisory much easier in the fiction section if you have a pretty good idea of what is in your collection. And if you do have um, something I was thinking about, about the fact that previous slide, um, well, I think you mentioned earlier about people being concerned that if my books, if my shelves aren't full, the community is going to be up in arms. Like, why are you not filling every inch of the space? Mm -hmm. um, another thing I think that would be a good answer to people who just say that is we need to have room to grow. We need to have, if we're going to have, do you want us to buy new books? We need to have somewhere to put them. Right. So we have to take out the old ones. We have to have the room. And we knew that there's some new, um, new blockbuster book coming out. Or we know right. there's some going to be an update to this kids, this, you know, teen series. series of books. We have to have the room to put in the new ones without having to every single time we buy something new 
shift everything. Right. You've got to have that space there for when you have new things that are coming in. So it's an ongoing, um, you know, so that's a way to um, address those concerns of some people who might say, why isn't this filled up? And, and where have all the books gone? I, yeah. And I think if people are given an idea of what's going on, mm -hmm. they're much Tran more... Be transparent about it. Yes. yes. Explain why, why you're doing it. Like some of the information you're going to learn today is ways that you can answer to people's questions about... Well, and a lot of times I, I recommend not wait for the questions. I recommend being transparent. Make sure your staff is on board. Make sure your library board knows what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And your regular customers who come in who might see a shelf change over a day's time. If they come in every other day and they, they see all of a sudden there's this one section that has a lot more space, let them know what you're doing. So then we're still on the benefits of weeding, the appeal. Customers are attracted to newer looking material. And it's not only children. Adults are the same way. If you put, if, it doesn't matter what the title is, people are attracted to things that look newer. And there is the one thing I can say that you can take to the bank circulation will increase mm -hmm. after weeding. Yeah, that's like, it's been studied. It's a, it's a no. It, it's a no. It seems like, but we have less. We have less material. How but, can circulation increase? Your numbers will They go can finally up. see the good stuff they want to check out. From and, yeah. and if you are looking to increase your circulation, and sometimes it's important to your um, funding agency, to your library board, they'll say, gosh, what's going on with our circulation here? Why aren't we checking out more books? Tell them you need a weeding project because circulation will increase after that. Now, your library's reputation is something that you really need to guard. You want to have a good reputation. You want to be seen as someplace where people can go and find reliable information. Mm -hmm. accurate and if they feel like if they walk in and say there's nothing here but a bunch of old books and they turn around and walk out how many times do you think that is said in their neighborhood to their family there's no point in going back there there's yes. nothing there but share, old books. they're gonna say that to other people yeah and and if the library comes up they're sure gonna say it so you keep that reputation for having current material and people need to trust that you have good stuff. So make sure they can see it. Now this uh, last one is um, specifically for the librarian. It gives you constant feedback. You can identify where there are holes in your collection because if you're going through and weeding, you're looking at each area. So you can see where there are things missing. Mm -hmm. the, it will help you prepare a wish list. Now, and this is not about weeding, but it's, a, it's something that you need to know for sure, is prepare a wish list. Have something, uh, several things that you think people might honestly decide to purchase for you, mm -hmm. but you never know the next person in the door might say to you, we have some memorial money in our family and we'd like to get something for the library. Mm -hmm. And if you stand and stutter, you don't know what you need. And you don't know what, if you don't have something specific, then you might not get that memorial money. Mm -hmm. But, okay, so. so. This is a way, at the same time, you can kind of and kill two birds with one stone here. Something that some libraries do, and well, you know, like in retail and stores, they do is an inventory. Mm -hmm. What do we have? What are we short of? What keeps getting purchased or checked out? At the same time as doing your reading, this is how you do your 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 version of an inventory. What do we have books on topics? What are we missing books on topics? Right. What if I just weeded out this old book about? 
oh, I don't know, um, some old medical book or something. Not yeah. even as bad as <laughs> the benefits of smoking. Yes. And you're, you then you make a note. I'm this is this is a good book, but it is dated, so I need a new version of this. And it might be something kind yeah. of pricey, so it could go on your wish list. Exactly. <clears throat> And it makes you so that you're really familiar with what's on the shelf. So when someone does walk in and yeah, ask for something on a topic. Yes, we have that. I just you, saw it. <laughs> you, you can walk right to it. The, the one other thing that I want to mention here is if you're considering changing your automation system. Mm -hmm. When you move to a new ILS, generally you pay per record meaning per item that you add. You do not want to be paying for the old stuff, stuff that's got crayon marks in it, that the pages are torn, that the spine is ripped, mm -hmm. or just plain old. Or things that, are, that haven't circulated and are not going to circulate. That's a waste of money. It is a terrible waste of money. <clears throat> so consider that. Now, we talk about weeding factors, and as you look at this, you think, oh my gosh, this is way too many things too many to things. consider. How am I ever going to think of all these things as I'm looking at each book? It does get really confusing. Now, the first thing on the list, physical condition, that's the easiest one to weed for. You can even have volunteers, because what you want them to do is go to the picture book area, open every single picture book, see if the pages are torn, see if there's coloring, see if there's unidentifiable stains. <laughs> you don't want any of those unidentifiable yeah. <laughs> stains. Or even identifiable ones, yeah, yeah. you know what happened to yes. it. <laughs> so you, your volunteer, can make a cart for you of the picture books that have physical issues. Then all you have to do is go back and look for other factors. Mm -hmm. And I say picture books because they generally are the ones that are in the toughest shape. Mm -hmm. They get but, a lot of use and a lot of, yeah. Well, and you know, three year olds. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So that's the one your volunteers can do. Now, what you want to do though is make weeding more simple than this. Make it simple using the CREW method of weeding. CREW stands for Continuous Review Evaluation Weeding. It was developed by the Texas State Library. It is free to download. The website is there on the screen. I do recommend that you print it because it's not easy to use on a screen. It's much easier to carry with you. I do have to say, you need to be ready to print a lot because it is 108 pages long. Mm -hmm. And it has been updated to include what to do about um, ebooks. Ah, okay, great. People don't think about needing to weed ebooks. Oh, sure. But well, there they, comes a time. As of right now, there you could have. We, we started doing old net library collections in the 2000s, early, I don't right. remember how old, the, I think the first one was in 2000 maybe, so there's definitely going to be things in there in your ebook collection that also get dated just like your print, your physical collection, yeah. Right, and this book, this manual, has what to do with, with those as well. Cool. So crew, if you're going to go with the crew method, this is what you need to do. You weed a little bit every day. You might pick a shelf or a range, something that you can look at in a, in a few minutes time, 15 minutes. As you're checking material in, you look for stuff that's shabby, just flip through it. When you pick books up out of the book drop, open each one. I know it seems like that takes a ton of time, but really, if you find something that's got gum sticking the pages together, you might not see it if you just scan it and put it on the shelf or the cart to be shelved. So just flip through the pages and, and look for things that have been damaged or, or outdated. Now, as you go around shelving, 
look for those duplicates. Maybe you buy more than one copy of a bestseller when it first comes out. I know there's libraries in our area that buy more than one. Some of them loan them. There's high they demand lease them. when things are first published. Yeah. Right. But look for those those unused duplicates because they take up an incredible amount of space. When things are first published, sure, they're, they're popular and everybody wants to read it. And if you do holds in your library, you've got a huge long hold list. But eventually, the, the interest is going to wane. Right. And you don't need all those duplicates. And then you can pick the one in the best condition to keep mm -hmm. and get rid of the rest of them. Now, you might want to look, and as you're shelving, you might shelve on one side of some books and then on the other side. But it seems like they're always there. Pull them out and look at them. See what it is. They may have an unattractive cover, which I, I get it. How many times do you hear said, don't judge a book by its cover? But everybody does. Mm -hmm. So look at the unattractive, see if it's an unattractive cover. Maybe there's something you can do. Maybe there's a display you can make. Maybe it's the second book by an author who really should have been a one book wonder. Mm -hmm. You know, they, their first book was so popular when their second one was published, you thought, oh, I need to buy this. Of course they then see. nobody reads it. <laughs> so see if that's what your shelf sitter is. Mm -hmm. Double check and see if you have any of those simplified or the abridged classics. I mean, if you're going to keep the classics, keep the real thing. The ones with the pictures drawn and the, they're not going to help. If a child comes in and says, I need to read Treasure Island, they really need to read Treasure Island, yeah. not an abridged classic. So pull those out. The last thing you might want to check for is if it's cataloged incorrectly. Look at the Dewey number. Is that why people aren't finding it? And maybe people yeah. aren't finding it. Yeah, check the subject headings. Look at the book. See if the subject headings in your catalog match what actually is in the book. You might need to recatalog it. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that you can do just a little bit each day, and you think, well, that takes up the, all of what I have time for today. <laughs> um, but it doesn't. When when it becomes part of your routine. It will really help your collection. Yeah. Now, and I like that this is the, the very first thing there, a little bit every day. This does not have to be a huge project with a capital P and, oh my gosh, we have to do this. And all you this put it off. And yeah. It's going to be so We need huge. to close the library. Yeah, the entire collection, I have to go through it all. Oh my gosh, it's going to take me this whole week. No, you're going to do it every single day mm -hmm. throughout the year as a regular maintenance type thing. And like checking the materials, you check them in, it will become a habit when you realize, I think, things are looking good. I'm going to keep it looking good. And books come in, you're going to say, is this one worth it? Is it going to become, like you mm -hmm. said, it's going to be part of your team, part of your habit. Is this book worth keeping in the collection? Do I need to rethink it? Do I need a different copy? Do I need mm -hmm. to, you know, um, and you just put it in your schedule maybe. 15 minutes, 20 minutes um, from 11.30 to noon, this is what I do before right. the big lunch, you know, lunch rush or before the kids come in after school. Um, I can do a quick run through of things. Mm -hmm. Put it on your calendar as an official thing in your schedule. Right. And, and you do, you will still have to go out to the shelf and actually look through each item. Mm -hmm. Because not everything is checked out. That's the issue. You have, that's why they have to be weeded. So when you're looking at the crew manual, this formula is in front of each um, range in the Dewey list. So if you're looking at the psychology, they will have this, this formula. What it means is the, the first X stands for the copyright date. So is the item more than X years old? So for psychology, it could be five. I don't know. I didn't look. <laughs> but it could be. So if it said five, what you're supposed to check for and see if the copyright date is more than five years old. If it is, that's a reason you may want to consider weeding it. Now, crew, along with every other method of weeding, 
is a guideline. You know your community, you know your collection, you know what has been checked out or what might be checked out. I mean, I, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but you have a, a good idea of the assignments that are given at the school. So it's always a guideline. Mm -hmm. Then when you, you look at the middle X, it's the maximal permissible time without use. That means, has it not checked out in the last three years? So if it's more than five years old and it has been on the shelf for two solid years, maybe you'll want to get rid of it. And that's what's so great about crew is it, it breaks it down. There's different numbers in there for the psychology and the science. This isn't a cut and dry every single book in the in your collection goes has, is the same calculation right it's going to vary there is no hard hard line. everything all the certain number of years old has to go right there's no everything that hasn't circulated in the last three more than in the, within the last <coughs> excuse me three years has to go that is not what we're saying that is not i've had people say this and to that's me. not they, true they, they, they've, they've mis misunderstood that these Things we've mentioned them. Um, that's not how it works. It has everything has to be done on a case by case basis. But this is a guideline to get you started, at least thinking about it, and then you'll decide depending on the topic, depending on, like you just said, your school, your local school's curriculum, your university's curriculum, or your your um, K twelve. You know what they do need, and you wouldn't read that stuff. Right. The stuff they aren't doing, you would. Yeah. So the last piece of the formula is called musty. And those, once again, another thing that it stands for here. Musty, stand, M is for misleading. And that's the A number one. If there's any reason to take a book out, there's no saving grace. I don't care if it looks brand new. If it is inaccurate information, it is misleading and it must go. So that's, that's, there's just nothing more on that. Then you have to look at it and say, is this an ugly book? Now we've all seen ugly books. So you, you can identify it once you see it, but you need to consider what is the condition. Is there any sign of mold or mildew? Is there, it may look great except for those little black spots along the spine. You, it's time to get rid of it. That's a health issue too. Yes, for some people, it's a health issue with um, with asthma or breathing issues. Right. Um, it can be very dangerous. And it spreads in your collection. Yeah. So you need to get rid of the ugly stuff. Okay. Then has it been superseded? That means is it outdated? And the th the example I always think of here is when. Pluto was declared to be no longer a planet. <laughs> so we felt bad for Pluto, but we really felt bad for the space section of every library because now you have information that has been superseded. It's outdated. There is no longer a planet named Pluto. And you need to get rid of that stuff because the third grader coming in won't remember that. No, they won't know. They won't have any knowledge that it used to be. Right. So yeah, that has to go. T, trivial, meaning no longer of interest. And this is a hard one, I think. And so I looked up a little bit about it, and it's and what I found said triviality implies that the material included in the item was popular for a very brief period of time, but the interest now has largely waned. Books are published seemingly overnight when there's a new fad or when a new celebrity hits the scene. And biographies of pop culture performers, games and consumer products, television shows, diets, that's a big oh, one, yeah. and fiction series come and go very quickly. And the interest may last a few months or maybe even a few years, but it fades fast. So a lot of them are published are paperbacks. Mm -hmm. They hit the shelf, and as long as people are still interested in it, and pretty soon that topic is gone. So when you see something trivial that is no longer of interest, 
you'll recognize it. Yeah. You'll know what it is. Now, I, irrelevant, that is based on your own community. Mm -hmm. Now, if you, if you live in the flatlands like we do here in Nebraska, that doesn't mean you not necessarily want books about how to hike in the mountains. You might want one or two here because people vacation there all the time. Mm -hmm. But you don't need a massive quantity of books on a topic such as mountain climbing when you because it's not necessarily relevant to your daily population. Like I say, remember the people who go on vacation, but watch for things, the purchase of things where it's just irrelevant. And then E stands for elsewhere, and we've talked about that already, it's interlibrary loan. So to start reading, you need to get, you really, you've done your everyday kind of thing, and you look at your shelves and you think, yep, I need to go there, I need to start. So you gather your usage statistics. You can generally run a report from your um, ILS mm -hmm. that gives you last date of checkout or if you're using pockets and cards of course you've got your card right there you know the last time it was checked out so once you have your usage statistics then you need weeding tools you need little slips of paper they can have you can make really detailed ones or it could just be a slip of paper what happens with those is if you pull a book off the shelf and you think, wow, this one really needs to be replaced. We, this is a very popular topic. You can just write replace on it. Stick that slip in the book, put it on the shelf or on the book truck that you have brought out with you. Mm -hmm. Then, depending on what you want each thing to happen to each book, you just make a quick note because believe me, you get that to the back room then you're stuck trying to figure out why did I put this on the cart <laughs> so make sure to have a shelf marker because if your shelves are really tight when you pull one out the space disappears and you don't want to spend all of your time looking at the forgetting where you left off yeah you doing some section yeah, if you already did yeah if you answer the phone or go get a drink or it just look down and look back up again then you've got to figure out oh, where does it go in so it's just easier. Have a shelf marker. Of course, you'll need your book truck, a pencil to make notes, and that crew manual will be invaluable. You do examine the section item by item. People have asked, well, why don't you just pull off the ones that look bad? No, you need to look at each item. They may look perfect mm -hmm. and they may be outdated. So pull it off the shelf, look at it. If nothing else, you can grab a dust rag and dust underneath as you go. Sometimes it's hard to determine if you should keep something and there are tools for that and you can use the core collection books that you can borrow from the Commission here. There's the Fiction Core Collection, Children's Core Collection, and the Public Library Core Collection for nonfiction. And what those do for you is if you're looking at a book and you're thinking, should I keep this? You can look up in that core collection book and see if it's something that is recommended to, to be saved. Mm -hmm. If you do that, I would make a note, an inside back cover, small note with a pencil, Why? check yeah. core collection mm -hmm. and put a date so that you know. Because you believe me, you never remember everything and it's it's hard to sometimes pinpoint why you've and done something. With this weeding being an ongoing process, at some point you'll come back to that you'll section. At it. Maybe in five years, mm -hmm. but it'd be nice to know five years ago, what was I thinking? Or if that's true, somebody else, else. Your new, your, if there's a different person that comes in who does that, they'll be able to look and see, oh, this is what they did. It was in the core collection. This is why. Yeah. Yeah. So then you get that book cart back to your office or behind the desk or wherever you go and you need to start distributing the books where they go. Do they are you, the bindery 
I save that for things that you really need to keep that are out of print, like things for your genealogy collection. Yeah. If it, mending is also a little bit tricky, if you don't have somebody that knows how to mend or likes to mend, mending can be a black hole where things go. And it can be a fairly popular book when it goes there. But if nobody ever gets the mending done, nobody ever fixes it, yeah, then it, you just as well get rid of it. So if you're going to discard, replace it. If you if you want a new copy, make sure you've written replace, and um, or if you're going to recycle something. Now, as we talked about, you can display those low circulating items. If you have something that looks great. It's a, a book of crafts that you thought everybody was going to want to borrow. Display it. Have a whole display of craft books from that area and see if they go out. Maybe you don't have as many crafters in town as you thought. Yeah, you may come up with ideas for just display ideas as you're going through the books. You'll say, look at all these different, like the the one shot books uh -huh. and it wonders but then there's the follow up you so, know right that kind of thing that'd be a great display and you know a theme around that and you'll you'll come up with these ideas so and as like you say you go through range by range make sure and say okay i've gone through this these three shelves the next three are going to be for next month put it on your calendar write down where you're going to start so that you remember because <laughs> once again it's easy to forget now how much to eat because this is a fear I'm going to I'm going to get rid of too many books how could I what should I do well 5% is one thing that you hear and and as you're reading about weeding you see 5% this allows for the turnover of the collection every 20 years. And what that, it doesn't literally mean that no book that's there today will be gone in 20 years. You know, everything will be gone. But it's, it's important that turnover is something that the commission looks at in the accreditation process. Mm -hmm. yeah. And actually the commission accreditation standard is a minimum of 3%. Yeah, we give you a little, yeah, a little bit. So, <laughs> that's somewhere in that range. Yeah. You need to be of, of your collection, mm -hmm. and this is going to be, you know, as I said, this is all. And this is a rule of thumb. None of this is in stone. It's right. just everything's going to be a case by case. Mm -hmm. I've had some libraries come to me, or I've, we've heard of libraries. Um, explaining their reading to their community and saying why they're doing it saying well the commission says we have to get rid of everything that's over five years old <laughs> no or the commission says we have to get rid of everything that hasn't circulated in the last three years and there's just books flying out the door no 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 this is all you need to evaluate you need to look at things these are some criteria you can use to get started if you're not sure what do I do they can guide you, but you're going to evaluate things in a case by case basis, and you're going to have things that are 20 years old, 30 years old, classics. As it says here, you're going to want to keep classics in your collection, but you might need a new copy of it because right. it's been so old. You need a new version. Mm -hmm. This is how things, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. then, then here are some questions that you can ask yourself while you're reading. Once again, trying to figure out, should I keep it? Should I get rid of it? Would I be embarrassed if the library did not own this item? Mm -hmm. Once again, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you say Treasure Island or or some mm -hmm. some other classic, War and Peace, I don't know. Is it this is about local interest in offering this which questions? A local author. Right. If you have, that would be embarrassing. Yes. Someone who you know is a local author either in your community or in Nebraska that you know people are asking about or who will, will who want may to show up on may your show, Yeah, that's true too, especially if they're living. Um, of course you would keep their things. You wouldn't right. just say, sorry, it was five it's years old. older. No, yeah. no. So you look at what fits the needs of the community. If it has local interest, once again, if that author is still living and writing because a lot of people come later to an author 
-hmm. and they read it and then they want to go back to the beginning. Oh, yes, everything else they've written. And that doesn't mean that you have to keep everything that everybody's ever written. If you have one Daniel Steele, that doesn't mean you have There's to have so many. every <laughs> Daniel Steele. Because believe me, someone else has it. So those are a good borrow. case for interlibrary loan. Yes, yes, you can borrow it. And, you know, think about it. If I put this in a nice looking display, would, would somebody borrow it? I think they might. They might. They so, just try, and then you'll know. And yeah. then you'll know. And if nobody borrows it, okay, now I know. That's right. And then you know, then then you can read that. So some of this reading is going to be a multi-step process, too, right? Especially with that putting on display. You know, you're going to create a display of some things you want to try and garner more attention to, or you think should have gotten checked out because either you thought it was interesting, or you know people were asking about it, but they just couldn't find. They it. didn't track it down. Yeah, put out the displays, see what happens, and the ones that don't, then you've got your kind of second step of well, I tried. Let's now it go, now it goes. It's got to go. When I display for a month, everyone who I thought might be interested came in and Has walked been, by it. Yeah, I've been through and, here. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and then. Question that gets asked a lot is, what do I not read? Mm -hmm. what, what should I always keep? You know, always is kind of tricky. But on your first pass through, let's say, do not read local history. And beyond repair is is really a term you have to look at. Bindries can do a lot of good work, and so. Local history, one of those things that is never going to be printed again, the book from the 125th year celebration. Mm -hmm. Nebraska's communities recently had a lot of those. Yeah. 125 years. They, they were all founded about the same time. So 10 years from now, mm -hmm. if they've had a lot of use, they could be in really bad shape. Mm -hmm. But that's something I'd look at the bindery for. Historic materials like that, you're going to want to hold on to and figure out a way to get them repaired. Because Next that's time. people, when they think of library, they do think of archives a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to archive everything. But certainly in your community and possibly your county. Um, but local history is something that I would not throw out. Um, as you talked about, Krista, the local authors, mm -hmm. especially when they're up right and walking because you don't know when they're going to show up. Local settings. Now, you know, it was, the book was written about Nebraska, not really real people, but Nebraska is the setting. Now, once again, if they have not circulated in five years, then you really have to think about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying throw it out after five years. I'm saying consider weeding it at that point. Genealogy material, that's the same as the local history. All those records of births and deaths and things, those handwritten that things. handwritten stuff. You can't get rid of it. You need to you get figure it. out a way to find a spot. Yeah. Even if it's a closet, <laughs> tuck it away. Figure out a way to repair it, to preserve it. Um a whole other discussion would be potentially scanning it to make an, a right. digital copy just in case the physical one something happens falls to pieces at some point. That's a whole other um, another yeah, show. Yeah, that's a different <laughs> different topic. Yeah, so, yeah. But and then of course, if you have kept reference works that build on each other, like the quotation books, a lot of times mm -hmm. they build from one section or one edition to the next mm -hmm. edition and then you still have to look at the condition of it. So then here's the really tricky question yes. is, is what do you do with all of those books that you have weeded? Once again if you weed a little bit each time each day that you're there or each week then it's easier. Because you might have two or three things, maybe one, things that you want to dispose of. You could keep a stack if you have a library friends group and you have an agreement with them that they're going to have an annual sale or that you provide an ongoing rack sale for them. That's one thing to do with weeded books. You'll definitely want to consider the condition. 
you don't want your friends trying to sell stuff that's falling apart or that has a big chocolate stain in it or, you know, whatever it is. And, or coffee spilled on it or the ones that smell so much like smoke that, once again, people with asthma are in trouble. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to sell them and, and make a little bit of money back. You can sell them to a used book dealer. Or actually, you don't really sell it to them. It's more of a consignment relationship. Better World Books and Thrift Books are two of the biggest ones. So if you're in a situation where you have quite a few weeded books, you can Google them and, and find out what their criteria is. They were really good classes where you just box them up, send them to them, they figure out selling them, and then you get, and then you get a percentage of it. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's one way, but they only take certain things. That's true. Better World does have some criteria. Yeah. Right. So you just have to check into that. You can donate them. Um, once again, I definitely get rid of the worst books, in condition wise. Um, you can donate to a hospital if you have large print. You can donate to a care facility. Um, if you have a correctional facility, a lot of times the they are desperate sometimes for libraries to take materials. They don't have a lot of um, a budget or budget necessarily. To, um, and of course, and they have to be pretty particular about the stuff that they get as well. But they can decide that. So yeah. you can donate to charity. Now, something you need to think about is there are ethical concerns with donating weeded nonfiction books. If like recently I was helping a library weed and they had they looked brand new a book on I think it was every country in the world I kid you not that they were countries no, a series a, it was a yeah. series and so there was every country and so you get to that Dewey number you'd open it up and it was and it was always the same format you know here's the physical properties of this country here's the economics of this country, here's the population. I mean, they and each book laid it out the same way. The problem was they were published in 1980. And mm -hmm. I I was recently weeding them. So, so that's gonna be some totally inaccurate. Yeah. We some of those countries don't even mm -hmm. exist anymore. Think of Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't it is no longer Yugoslavia. It's all been broken up into these other countries. 1980 the populations and the economics and everything has changed. So do you really want to donate that to a, a homeschool library or a, maybe even anything, anywhere, anywhere, any of these places? Anywhere. You don't want to, now for book sale and book used book dealers, that's different because people, hopefully people buying those will, will would be aware. Would be buying them for a reason, like I want to know what it, what it did say. The pictures or, or yeah, I'm doing this for some historical research, but for some place where they're going to just give it to people to read, like the nursing homes and uh, um, charities and things, don't pawn off, pawn, pass off your old misinformation and inaccurate mm -hmm. books on other places just so you need to get rid of it. Right. So those are the kind of things you have to watch um, and think about. Is, is the organization you are giving them to going to want them once they get there? Right. Are they going to use it? Yeah. So, and, and one really fun thing to do is, is the altered book crafts. I don't oh, know yeah. if you've seen those. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a lamp. Yeah. yeah, I have a lamp that yeah. ha is made out of books. And mm -hmm. I saw an, an e-reader cover and it was actually the cover of an old oh that's cool um to make the reader e -reader yeah look like a book and it looks it was great yeah. so that's part of the recycling so you could do a do a program on recycling our old weeded books into altering. making art altering them into something art into yes. art yeah. and teens love it um i know the commission has a few books about that topic because mm -hmm. i've borrowed them myself and the system offices have professional collections as well, mm -hmm. and they may have some that of those types of books in their programming. Mm -hmm. But the recycling, straight up recycling, paperbacks you can put in the bin, mm -hmm. but hardbacks they cannot recycle that those hard covers. Right. Yeah. And so we, unless they've changed, yeah. we were told that the covers had to be cut off, and then the pages could be recycled. 
check with whoever does your recycling. Yeah, you know. I would say. But if and if that's the process, believe me, you it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. The time the time it, just, it takes to, to get do them that. Taken apart. You know, and I always thought, well, you know, if you had some teenagers that needed to do a community service mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, I'm gonna give them a knife. No, I don't think so. <laughs> You know, a, a box cutter. Yeah. But, and then, you know, there comes a time when they need to go in the dumpster. But when something goes in the dumpster, it needs to be a, unavoidable. I mean, you have to, mm -hmm. and you don't, it's better not to just load up the dumpster with books that are not in bags. Mm -hmm. Discreetly is the Term. And this is key to doing it as an on and ongoing basis so you don't have this week we weeded the entire library and now our dumpsters are overflowing with books. It's going to be a gradual thing. Right. Each week a few books will be in there and it won't And then be, you're gonna yeah. add more books. Yeah. I mean and then people and will, will see, see it things. as an ad Right, yes. So sh you show the give and take. Yes, we get rid of those, but look, we bought these ten new books and that's why. Right. Um and this is about the worst condition. These are the things like the mold, the damage. There is no, there's no saving it. <laughs> right. Um, so it, it is, you know, it, it hurts. It does. It hurts my heart. It's, it's garbage. It's become garbage now because of the damage to it. Right. Yeah. Well, I see we're getting pretty close here. Um, yeah, it's just at eleven o'clock, but that's okay. We started a little after. Um, we will um, continue our session here until um, uh, Denise gets through everything she has to share, um, and it's all being recorded for you. Um, not a problem. So if you do need to leave because you're only allotted this one hour officially in your okay. schedule for this, that's fine. Um, but we'll finish everything up here and the recording will be available later and you can watch the rest of it that you weren't able to watch live right. here. Because we'll rush through anything. We'll okay. get all the information, all the information done and out there into the recording. Yeah, because I wanted to talk about our month of meeting. Yeah. That was so much fun. Mm -hmm. But there are controversies that have come up, and you may have heard of some of them. And this is why people are nervous about weeding. I do actually want to jump in one, one thing. If you do have any questions about weeding, something particular in your library, um, type it into the question section, get it in there. Even if you have to leave, I'll make sure that we um, answer it for you so you can come back and see what the answer is later um, if you're unable to stick around. So do type in and get your questions in there um, for us. Okay, go ahead. All right. Well, and, and like I say, these kind of things are really hot buttons. Mm -hmm. And so much so that I have seen them on television news. I've seen okay. them front page newspaper. They can be very hot button controversies. And so that's why people are nervous about it. But if you lead with the crew method, you won't have this. And if you keep your staff informed, if you have somebody on the staff who is really against weeding, you need to win them over because they're going to be out in the community saying the same things to the community that they say to you, you and your staff. Why are we doing this? We shouldn't be throwing away books. All the good books are going in the trash. You know, it's really bad PR. So it's very important to get your staff on board so that they know why and how this is happening, that it's very measured, very considered, mm -hmm. that it's not just willy-nilly. You have to make sure, and, and your board is as well, because if anybody walks up to the library board and says, did you see the dumpster behind the library, mm -hmm. and, they've been, and they're being blindsided, it's a bad thing. So the, the one debate that comes up so often is it's a classic. People should read the classics. We need to hang on to them. Where are they going to find them if not here? Mm -hmm. So, yes, if they support the curriculum of your local school or if you're a college library, then yes, keep paper copies of whatever classics or whatever authors, if it's a big Faulkner. If everybody has to read one Faulkner, I'm sorry. <laughs> Faulkner was not my favorite. I read a whole bunch of Faulkner, yes. but it, I never I'm got any better. I'm the same way with Hemingway. He just makes I just don't like him. But it's, it's but not, they're classics. Me. They're yes, classics. Just me. <laughs> so and and people really feel like it's as our duty as librarians to love them all and expose them to great literature. Mm -hmm. and, and 
unless a movie comes out or the books like the Pride and Prejudice and Zombies oh, yeah. or whatever it was. <laughs> I mean, for a while, the classics were, were really checking out. Yeah. Because they read that one because the zombies and somehow they said, oh, I wonder what the original what, is what like. The real Where did this is? come from? Yeah. yeah. So hey, it was a good it was a good method of getting people to read them. Mm -hmm. But if they're itty bitty books as they were in the older days, and believe me, I've seen a lot of books from the 1940s since I've been back here in Nebraska. <laughs> Um, if you open it and the pages are brittle mm, and yeah. yellow and the type is the smallest font you have ever seen, no one is going to read that. Nobody can. Even if they're required, even mm -hmm. if it's on the list. So go ahead and go to like Dover. It's a publisher that does paperback books, very inexpensive classics. Three or, three or four dollars and you can have a classic replaced and you know Sam Shaw from here at the Commission gave me a, mm -hmm. an idea he said that if if many of your classics are in really bad shape go ahead and discard them then buy an inexpensive e-reader like at Christmas time when the Kindle is on for 39 or 49 dollars mm -hmm. then go to Project Gutenberg which is a free online database of books that are in the public domain and go ahead and download the titles that you need to, to fill in your classic collection and then circulate that e-reader because you can That's Gutenberg cool. titles yeah. are are free because yeah. they're in the public domain. Well, these classics are in the public domain. They're so old. That's perfect. Yeah. So yeah. So Sam gave me that idea. I thought uh -huh. that was a good one. Here is our classics e-reader. Yes. Do it. <laughs> Go ahead. Read any classic you want. <laughs> but it's important that you focus on the positive. As I mentioned, keep the staff informed. Then if people see, say, oh, where's that book going? That's my favorite book. Well, <laughs> gee, maybe you can buy it at our next book sale. But but make sure that they're they're keeping it positive, that there's not complaints going on about old and yucky stuff. Mm -hmm. um, make the, the positive spin is you're making room for new material. You're, the shelves are easier to navigate. You're replacing outdated information. The ultimate goal of reading is positive. Right. Is, is, is a positive thing. And that's where transparency is important for yep. to your staff, to your community, to your board, as you mentioned, to any stakeholders. Anybody you walk by on the street who you chat with about the library. Right. Um, the, start it with the whole thing is like this is a good thing happening and here's all the why. And here's the good stuff. Yeah. And and in my notes, I have transparency is key. That is the word, transparency. And weeding isn't always about ridding the shelves of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes about getting fresh new titles, fresh mm -hmm. or fresh new copies of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to leave it on this slide for just a little bit and talk about the month of weeding that yes. we had. This is also an, an a annual. Ish, right? it, it is an, it, it started out as a week of weeding mm -hmm. and we ran it that way for several years mm -hmm. and this year it just seemed useful to us to to focus on it for a whole month mm -hmm. and what we encourage people to do is weeding a section of their library that they've been avoiding now you know what that is <laughs> a, a certain genre that uh, is a favorite of your own that you just didn't want to weed anything but we do ask you to just look at it and consider it and if you do weed anything then let us know it wasn't about quantity as far as we weren't saying you have to weed at least a hundred titles we never, there was no end you didn't all we ask is that you consider weeding, that you walk to that shelf and give it a little bit of a try. And if you needed some help, um, it, over the past about three years, Central Plains Library System has had co-directors, Sharon Osenga and myself, and Sharon did a lot of weeding, especially this last April. Mm -hmm. So then, and we usually had a little bit of a prize, 
And I was going to say that last year in April, for our month of weeding, we had 18 public libraries, 18 school libraries, and they weren't the same communities. Huh? Cool. All different communities, and even an academic library participates. So 37 libraries, and yet we some we did just a few things, and some did that major overhaul because it hadn't been done for 40 years. Um, but we we did a rough estimate, and it was about 15,000 items for we did this spring. Now. They always find interesting things. I, I love the different things that show up. Um, there was a book on a librarian's shelf that she was a, a school girl in that school. And as she pulled the card out, she realized that she had checked it out in 1960. Wow. And it was so still nice. on the shelf. <laughs> she went from school girl to librarian. And 1960 is a lot of years that went by. Then there was a Bible on a shelf, which, and oh, that's a struggle. <laughs> yes. There was a Bible on a shelf and from the 1940s. And the current librarian realized when they pulled the card that their cousin, who was 80 years old, hmm. borrowed that book when he was in high school. Wow. So, you know, in Nebraska mm -hmm. where communities tend to, people stay in the same community, mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of that, but it just seems so odd that they kept seeing their own name yeah. or their <laughs> family's name. Yeah. <clears throat> the 1989 World Book. Oh, that's just <laughs> Yeah, no, that was a good one. And one public librarian was struggling with letting go of so many gently used books that were only checked out one or two times. And that's the thing that you have to know is, yeah, it's going to be a struggle. All of us can easily throw out the ones that are tattered and torn and stained. But, and it seems like a waste to get rid of those books when we battle so hard for money to buy books. Right. And then here we are getting rid of them. But if they've been on the shelf 5, 10, 15 or more years, they're taking up space. Mm -hmm. and, the, and it's they're, it's deceiving to people who walk in. They'll think, because when you are asking for funding for new material, they say, well, I've got plenty of books. What do you need? Yeah, the shelves are full. Yeah. So it's, it's really important to, to give people a true picture of what your library has. And some of those um, places like Better World Books and Thrift Books, this is a, it's a turnover thing. You're not just getting rid of everything and then you got to figure out where to buy it. You can make some money off of these old right. titles with those or with a book sale. I like having an ongoing, you know, sometimes you have your, your big annual book sale where everything that you have has been collected or people have donated books to help raise money for the library. Right. But some places have just a single shelf or extra book cart set aside for ongoing. Right. There's always a few books there that somebody could buy, and that's a little bit here and there. A little bit makes of a difference, yeah. Yeah, the, in a year ago, we just had, in 2016, we had a week of weeding. Mm -hmm. And we had quite a few people participate, but we had a big blizzard that, uh, that right. winter. So um, we did have to extend it. And they found so many things that are... The Hardy Boys Mysteries. Um, now that's yeah. something, if you have the old version of the Hardy Boys Mysteries, those hardback books mm -hmm. with the, the outdated picture on the front, yeah. they're not going to check out the, those books. Teenagers and preteens do not take those home. There are now the new, new Nancy Drew yes, and the Nancy new Boys. Hardy Boys. They've updated the covers and everything so that they are more attractive. And they're still things. nice books, good stories to read without any concern for parents that yeah. there might be topics they're not interested in. So you can do that. Um, there was one that was taken out that called Prison Nurse and it was copyrighted in 1962. It was, it was weeded in 2016. Uh, the Hooked on Phonics from the 1980s, oh, yes. that was a big program. 
and the Amy Vanderbilt Complete Book of Etiquette. So, some interesting things. You just uh, you run across all kinds of interesting things as you're doing that weeding. Some of these ones I was thinking about, and it's this may be a. Um, I think we did a session about this previously. You can. So I was just thinking about the Hardy, the old original Hardy Boys books. There are some people who are collectors, right? That would pay rather than just better books or thrift stores or something. Mm -hmm. um, that may pay more money than for for because they are collectible items. Because they're looking for they're looking for the title. specific title, specific edition of something. Um, and I know years ago we did do a session about that. I have to look into that again. But that's something else to look into when you're getting rid of some of the books that are old but still in good shape. Mm -hmm. You might be able to sell them on eBay or um, Amazon. You can sell things as a as a marketplace as a seller yourself and get a little bit more money right. than just here's a um, um, a fifty cent book we're putting out on a book sale. Right. Um, look into that definitely eBay and online things like that because collectors will you know research it a little will pay you a little bit more for some of these titles that they are hard to find that you may have had in your collection. For 40 Sitting years. very still, not moving. And they're in great shape, and a collector is going to just, you know, go crazy for that. <laughs> well, and they, and even with the library markings and the pocket and card, mm -hmm. sometimes that can add to the appeal, especially if the for some people card is from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You can tell historical. And, yeah. So I actually have a jigsaw puzzle, a big one, and all of it. Is covers of Nancy Drew books. Oh, cool. It's the covers uh, of the, yeah, old ones. the old ones. Yeah. yeah. So that was fun. So yeah, you're right. Collect collectors do like that kind of stuff. Now everybody has their Achilles heel. Things that are very difficult to read. Mine is cookbooks. I I have to agree, and I I acknowledge that. My husband hates it. I bring them home. <laughs> I just can't send those off. But um, art books in the 700s, that's really hard to, to get rid of those. Or some in our in the public libraries in central Nebraska, it's the crafts, mm -hmm. the knitting, the crochet patterns. But when you look at it and it's all a thousand things you can make with toilet paper tubes, you know, it's kind of <laughs> over over with. People don't want to see that anymore. But as we talked about, the, the whole point is to provide your patrons with, with better service and access to everything that they are interested in. Make sure and streamline your collection for efficiency and um, making it better for your community to use the library. Because that's what we want is for them to come in and use the library. Mm -hmm. We want to be relevant. We want to be current. We do not want to be just yeah. a museum of old dusty books or a warehouse. A warehouse, yeah. yeah. So, and if you have any questions and, mm -hmm. and didn't have the chance to send them in, you can um, go to the Central Plains Library System webpage and you can find uh, send me an email or. Or call me on my Nebraska only 800 number <laughs> and I'll be glad to answer what I can mm -hmm. yeah all right so it looks like nobody had any desperate questions they typed in I was encouraging but that's fine um, this is great information um, as if we hadn't done a meeting session in a few years on the show so I think and I know you've been doing this and I love the, the month of the special program you have for the month of week for the week of weeding turn into a month of weeding um, is a great thing to encourage people to just get on board with it and you know to do it. So that might be something you can do at your library if you do a focus time for it or. You know. Well, and that's we advertise it through our um, email list and on our web page. And what we are here, mm -hmm. what we do hear from people is thanks for giving me the nudge. I appreciate the reminder. The reminder yeah. And it's not you know we give away a prize like an e-reader or we gave away two e-readers during the month mm -hmm. of reading, but. It's, it's not necessarily about the price. I mean, they're thrilled to get it if they do. Yeah. But it's just the the push and the the feeling of community that hey, 
there's a lot of people in central Nebraska that are waiting right now. Yeah. I'll be one of them. And you could um, discuss with other librarians about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Reach out to your neighbor communities. Yep. And see, you know, what do you think of this book? Do you have a copy of it? Yeah. All right. So, no, like I said, nobody had any desperate questions. That's fine. Reach out to me if you do have anything. Um, so, that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, hit the escape over there and we'll. Switch over to, uh, I guess I've got a post like this. And, um, to switch to, there we go. Boom. All right. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. And I'm going to show you now where this will be on our um, website. This is the Nebraska Library Commission's website. And um, Encompass Live is listed under our education section, uh, Encompass Live webcasts. Um, you can search our site for Encompass Live, but you can also just Google us from your, your um, Your search engine of choice, and so far in the world, I keep saying this every week, someday it's going to change. We're the only thing called Encompass Live <laughs> out there. <laughs> so anything you use to search for, you will find our um, website. Uh, and it will go to um, um, where we'll have our upcoming shows, but our archives, I want to show you is right here. Um, and uh, this is where uh, last week's show is at the top of this page here. Um, today's we posted here at the top of the list, your most recent ones. Um, we'll have a link to the recording of the PowerPoint presentation, and it is here we had last time. Um, any of the URLs, uh, the crew manual link to mm -hmm. um, the Better World books, the other things we mentioned that those are publishing. Um, mm -hmm. We'll get you some links so you can quickly get to all these resources. Um, anyone who attended live today or registered for the show will be um, get an email sent to you to let you know when the recording is available. Um, it is um, you know, all of our recordings, as I said, are free and open to anyone to watch. So um, it'll also be posted out to our various social media and mailing lists as well but you guys will all get a direct um, message sent to you for that um, most likely it'll be done by the end of the day today as long as YouTube cooperates with processing and posting everything um, I'll have a message out to you later today um, so I hope you join us so that'll wrap it up for today show I hope you join us for next week where we just added this to the schedule um, it was a last minute thing we we're working on um, the talking books helping patrons all over Nebraska here at the Nebraska Library Commission we are we have the talking book and Braille service as part of our um, program of our, one of our departments here. Um, they're talking about the Braille service department, um, services all across the country. Um, but Scott Schultz, who is the director of our uh, TBBS uh, department, um, is going to talk to us about what they're doing there, um, what's available, the new things that you can get. Everything's going digitally in their area, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and um, some accessibility and um, access issues that um, libraries and people just with any sort of reading related disabilities have to um, be aware of and how libraries can help with this. So join us for next week's show on Talking Books and any of our other shows that we have coming up. Um, you'll notice the week after that, make, make sure you're aware of that. We do not have a show um, every um, um, once a year, our Nebraska Library Association and School Librarians Association annual conference. Um, that is the one week of the year that we do not have um, Encompass Live. Um, so we are here, here 51 weeks out of the year. Um, everybody's busy heading off to conference, so we don't do it that week. Um, so we'll be off that one week. If you are here in Nebraska, join us for the conference out in Kearney. You can get, I've got a link here to um, the program and the schedule. Um, and then, then after that, we've got our other no October and November dates are getting added on to here. So you'll see more and more topics coming up. So please do register for anything you see coming up. Encompass Live is also on Facebook. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. I give notifications about, um, here's a reminder to log in for today's show. Um, post when the recordings are available from previous sessions are all put on here so we update this page a couple of times a week so please if you are um, big on Facebook and want to track what we're doing there and be notified um, like our Facebook page other than that that wraps it up for today's show thank you very much everyone for attending thank you Denise for coming over here to um, join us this morning and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live bye bye